Tay Moss was the president of the Catholic Nurses Guild in Harrisburg. So she said to me, why don't we have a Catholic hospital? So I wrote to the bishop, and uh, he asked me what I proposed to do, and I said, get a group together and start talking about it. They were real visionaries because Cumberland County was a much smaller county then. You had to really envision the growth that was going to take place here and the need to have a hospital to serve that kind of growth. The West Shore was growing so aggressively and so fast, having a religious-oriented hospital, whether it be Catholic or Jewish or whatever, was irrelevant. But the fact that it was a Catholic hospital made a lot of sense. Bishop Lumiore took that project and ran with it. And got to know the sisters, asked whether they would go along with it, and they were quite happy to. And one of the things uh, Bishop Lomer uh, uh, loved about his time when he was here in Harrisburg uh, was his ability to work with the sisters because the sisters were so enthusiastic and so energetic in fulfilling the mission. There was great pride in getting this hospital up and running. I remember we opened, we had eight patients for our first day, and it took a little while to get to the point that um, we had a good number of people, but it built up day after day. We, we saw quick progress. It was our, our whole life was just the hospital and taking care of people, you know. It was, it was very nice. Tried to save money so that we could pay off the debt. So we, we presented the uh, canceled note to the board president, who was Mr. Booklocker at that time. And, uh, well, he gave me a big hug, but he said to me, where did you hide the money? You must have hid it under the carpet. Seven years after we opened the hospital, Sister Ursula came to me one day, said, guess what? And I said, what? She said, we paid off our debt today. Holy smokes, here I am, been going for 30 years, and they got it paid off in seven. S Sister Ursula was a wonderful, uh, she was wonderful in her leadership role uh, as, as the administrator of the hospital. And she had g good and high expectations, but she also had foresight to see what we needed to get prepared in for what's coming down the line. She was a wonderful mentor, and I worked with Sister for 20 years doing administrative work over the different departments that we had. And then she went to Rome January 1st, 1990, and then I took over in her position. We were a five-story building when I first arrived, and a 211-bed hospital. The next thing we knew, we were building seventh and eighth floors at the hospital and the eighth floor was to be uh, cardiac and surgical intensive care. Holy Spirit's mission is to provide a service where needed and back in 1975, 1976, th the concept of having off-site facilities was totally new and so for Holy Spirit to take that chance and make that investment I believe that they truly were doing it for the good of the community. It seems to me that every month there was something new and exciting happening. The birthplace and the NICU, the, the, the level three NICU, um, the emergency services, everything was expanding and home care was expanding. I guess the two very large milestones were the, uh, the, the Dietz emergency room, the huge building projects, and then of course the Hortensio Heart Center. Dad was involved with the hospital board. Now, he had no idea whatsoever that they were going to put his name on it. That was a total surprise to him. And uh, I think when he first heard about it, he was a little embarrassed, <laughs> okay? So he said, that's not why, <laughs> why I do these things. But uh, uh, he was certainly honored. And again, just, uh, he got so much pleasure uh, working with the Sisters of Christian Charity and with the physicians and nurses here at the hospital uh, made him feel that he was giving something back to the community. I saw the John Dietz ER being built and being there for the dedication. I was there for the groundbreaking for the Hortensio Heart Center. 
and Mr. Dietz at the time, had made the comment, was anybody here for the original groundbreaking of the original hospital? And I raised my hand and I said I was. I think we were the only two. My whole entire family, um, four brothers, a sister, and my mother and my father, were all afflicted with heart disease. And uh, I, in turn, have, have um, a history of, of two coronary bypass uh, operations. And I thought to myself, if, uh, if there's anything that you wanted to uh, give to in terms of getting some resources in the area, I thought, if, and our family thought, it would be a very, very good idea for us to, to be a leading contributor in the hospital. If we were going to do this, we needed to make a first-class heart center. Everything that existed in the ORs of that heart center were picked out by our physicians. The hospital is, is beautiful and, and, uh, and new and uh, different, and uh, people remark about how much they like it. We have expanded into where the services are needed with our metaplexes in Dillsburg, Duncannon, Carlisle, our women's health program, our expanded imaging program. There are just so many different services that are provided now that were not provided back uh, when I first started with the hospital, uh, our hospitalist program. The uh, affiliations that we've had with our other doctors have become a part of the family. So it, it has grown, but it has grown from a standpoint of need. Some of the exciting things we've done here in the past 15 years, uh, from the, the new Camp Hill Center, right across the street from the original campus, the American Office Building is now part of our campus, to our new urgent care center, as well as for the uh, new data center. We're taking a look and trying to meet all of the needs of the future in a way that will, again, satisfy the patients in the community. So information technology comes into play, and it's becoming the backbone of everything that we do. When you look at the trend in healthcare, so much now depends upon improved communications and instantaneous availability of information for the physicians and the nurses when they're treating patients. We have in excess of 2,500 employees. It sounds like, good Lord, that's an awful lot of employees, but you know, the hospitals open seven days a week, 24 hours a day. You can have all the medical wonders in the world, but if you don't have the people to provide those services you know, in the proper way, um, and so it's, it's the people that make Holy Spirit. So you have great doctors doing great medicine with great staff and nurses, and now you have Sister Romaine, who's brought on and really improved and has a great management team to support her. The building is still there. But it, floors have been added, different services have been added, services we never even expected to have. I'm sitting here with Sister Romaine and she's, she's listing out all the things at, in the year in review and I was just, I mean, I, I'm involved in a lot of these things and I was just overwhelmed to hear what we've actually accomplished in the last year. And if I go back to the previous year, it was the same way. The one constant has been the steady, caring hand of Sister Romaine. Um, and you know, making sure that um, all of the managers who have their own little niche to be specifically concerned about uh, don't forget the core mission of, of the hospital, which is you know, quality health care, an integrated health care delivery system, making use of technology, but always focusing on the patient and not only the medical but also the spiritual needs of the patient. We cannot lose sight of the mission. We have to work with the poor. We have to be willing to accept them. They have the clinics over on the other side of the river. So, so many things, you can't lose sight of the mission. I give our physicians and our management at the hospital a lot of credit for not only being caring and committed to the mission of Holy Spirit Health System, but in really being forward-looking. It's been a great 50 years, and it's, it's just been a wonderful institution, and I look forward to seeing it continue for the next 50 years and beyond. Everyone on the staff, from the cafeteria worker to the CEO, that there is that energy,
commitment, integrity, of purpose uh, for life. You can almost see that that was the perfect name for the hospital, Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit has been guiding the administration and all those in leadership for these 50 years. It's something greater than ourselves, and it's to be able to realize our potential of the gifts of mind and heart that we have through service to others, and that's the bottom line. That's what it's all about.